All right, guys, so welcome back. <clears throat> so, I had to make a, I had to 3D print a stand so that I could get my, my um, spring-loaded brush up underneath here like that because I still want to use this, but I definitely want to use his design, RD3DP, for the, uh, for the brushes and the commutator over here. So this goes on here like this. Actually, it goes like this. And so the brushes, which I already had, I had bought and or brought, bought a box of brushes a while ago. And these fit perfect. I have all different sizes. They go inside like that. And they will go up against this guy here my question is so this is one of two commutator things that go on like that <clears throat> and i have very thin copper sheeting that i can cut and put it around one of the hemispheres right here one of this the um slats here i'm not sure why he put these grooves in here um, i'm sure if i look at the picture i could see but one of my questions is with the ones that i made a while ago i would fold the copper into there and then put it on there so it can touch the shaft I suppose I could do the same thing for this, but I'm sure, my friend, you had a better idea on how to how to make a connection with the shaft. I thought maybe he would have had a hole in here unless it's on the end cap somewhere, which I don't see. The end cap goes on like this. Um, and there's where the set screw goes and gets caught up. Oh, you know what? No, that wouldn't work either. Anyway, if you're watching this, RD3DP, can you, uh, give me an idea of how you, what you used? Did you use copper sheeting it looks like you might have used a thin walled copper pipe and you just cut it down which i don't have any of so i would have to because i really like this design and what i may end up doing is using one of my cylinders not this one this one's a crappy one i've got a better one somewhere but i really want to use this because it's already all set up Again, I'm not sure what these are for. If they're for holding the sheet and then you would, uh, where does it go? You would then, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, here it is. You would then run a screw through there yeah i'm gonna have to take another look at at the picture but this is how i think it goes like that of course it goes on further this goes on like this these go on here and you line them up yeah, and I still want to use my spacer back or my connector back, my brush system back here because I really like that. And I'll have to look at the diagram and see what connects to what. Because right now I have the, um, the start lead is here. The finish lead is here. It's connecting to the start lead over here. And the finish lead is over there, I think. Yeah, I didn't actually connect these two yet. Finish, start, start, finish. So I'll have to 
unscrew this top, which only has a couple of screws in it. Because I want to get this guy going using the brush system that you designed. I really like this. This is really cool. But I still have to figure out some things like how to get contact with the um, with the shaft. Now I'm going to have to get my deburring tool and go like that. And then that should go on there. That doesn't go on there. I wonder what the deal. Oh, it just needs to be. Just needs to be. I wonder why that one came out so big. Anyway, I think there's plenty of room to run the foil. But unlike, yeah, to run the foil. I'm going to have to take another look at the picture. All right, stay tuned, guys. All right, so I think I've got this figured out, at least for me, because I only know of one way to wire up using a commutator. Well, actually, I know a couple of ways, but the only way that I know that works is to have one connection to the shaft go to, I forget which connection it goes to, I'll have to look that up, and then the other one intermittently connecting to the shaft. And so I've set this up the way I would set up a normal commutator, and I have my brush, which goes in here, and then spring-loaded, blah, 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 put that guy on there. So now I have to solder which I've learned how to do pretty successfully when it comes to soldering wires to connectors like this because I have this really good uh, flux. So I'll connect a wire. I'll, I mean, I'll solder. Probably I'll solder it directly to the wire itself. I'll cut off that, that, that little nub because I don't really need it. I just need the spring and wire it out hook this guy up which will go on the end here actually i have to push it in this way because of the way i have if you look inside there i have the copper sheet bent over but i did it in the wrong direction so i have to yeah anyway it'll still work but that's the only way I know how to do this. I know he uses dual MOSFETs. And, but I'm going to do it my way. Or at least I'm going to attempt to do it my way. Just to get this thing going like a regular Newman motor. I know I have to set up this contact to either be directly in line with north or directly in line with south. Which I have. God, I love this thing. And I love those coils. Look at that, huh? Those coils are freaking beautiful. Sky Collection would be proud. At least I hope he would. Um, anyway, I'm going to use... I, I, I know that he uses three, commuta or three brushes. Two on the top and one on the bottom. The one on the bottom probably does what this one does. But since I've already have this... I'm going, oh, you know what? Maybe I will try to do one on the bottom with this. And then just have it go right up against the shaft. Because I could do that because I have... Yeah, I could actually do that. But I'm going to start off like this. All right. Stay tuned. All right. So I got this guy connected. I had to cut away some of the spring because it was a little too, I think that's good. That might even still be a little bit too big or too much. Um, and of course, I'll continuity check it. But here's the, uh, the flux I was telling you about. Circuit works. CW3220. This stuff is freaking great. You can solder anything to anything. 
and it, it just works. I've tried a lot of different solders and ugh, they're all terrible. At least for how I solder and, and what I use solder for. I don't like the fact that this is tilted. I mean, once it pushes in, it goes straight. And then it'll go on here like so. Damn, I don't like the fact that that's tilted like that. Maybe I'll put a shim in there. Keep it straight. Put a plastic shim in there. Unless I use the wrong size. Um, where is it? The wrong size. Con um brush I got these a while ago because I figured I'd need them and sure enough and I used this one right here maybe I should have used a larger one let me see if the larger one will fit in there I don't think it will no it won't um these are fatter they won't fit yeah no I used the right one anyway yeah you get these on Amazon for pennies i think cost like i don't know four or five bucks something like that it wasn't that big of a deal all right gotta get ready to go out somewhere so i'll have to finish this a little bit later but yeah i'll do a continuity check really quick and bring you guys back stay tuned all right so i decided to make my own commutator and it's just a cylinder with a slit out of it. This is a half. I'm actually reprinting this to be a quarter. So it'll only be a, uh, come on, focus. It'll only be a quarter. And the new one that I'm printing out also has an, the same cutout, but on the ID to hold the foil piece when I bend it over. You guys will see when I when I do it. Anyway, stay tuned. Okay, so I have refined my commutator. If you look inside here, you can see, I don't know if you can see that, you can see the brass or the copper lead that actually comes off the end there, which will touch the main shaft and make a connection. This is the best one that I've ever made. I just hope it works. It should work because the, the cheaper ones that I've made have worked really good. But yeah, let's get this on the Newman motor, get it hooked up and see what happens. Stay tuned. All right. So this is my interpretation and I have my, um, I guess that's a positive lead going to the back there and then there's my commutator not really power not i mean i could turn it up kind of mesmerizing but yeah this is a great great design I just need to figure out how he did it with the two MOSFETs. I get good torque on that. Of course I would. Those coils are monstrous. But this is set up as your basic Newman motor. With the commutator where the finish winding goes to the commutator... The start winding goes to the negative and the positive goes to the shaft. Kind of cool. So now I need to figure out how I can get higher speed. I don't know if I need to increase 
the size of the pad of the commutator itself or if I need to decrease it. I think I need to increase it. Because right now it's only, instead of being half the size, it's only a quarter. Works good though. Not gonna break any speed records. All right, stay tuned. All right, here it is running on one of my uh, JL94 circuits. It's an older circuit, it just has one output. But yeah, I just wanted to see how it would run on this particular circuit. And I know I have it on its side, but I didn't feel like turning it over. Anyway, I love this motor. I'm gonna talk to RD3DP and have him send me the specs and design, if he can, for the dual MOSFET, because I wanna set this thing up the way he has it running. Alright guys, thanks for watching.